A common problem when marrying digital with sensitive analog audio and RF circuitry, such as found in this transceiver, is noise. Noise generated by the digital circuitry can creep in. It can cause problems, like an annoying buzz on receive or distortion on transmissions. Sometimes you might only find out when there's a problem if you go to a quiet location. A few videos ago, I described adding a CDV VFO from OzQRP to this BitX40 transceiver. It worked well. Yes, there was some noise when the antenna was disconnected, but the noise disappeared, or more accurately, was smothered with stronger ambient interference from a noisy neighborhood when the antenna was connected. However, in the field, it was a different story. The noise generated by the DDS VFO was such that weak signals were hard to hear, even though they could hear me. How do we fix the problem? And bear in mind, this can happen with any synthesized VFO, not just this one. The first thing is to work out how the noise is getting into the sensitive stage of your receiver. As you may be able to hear, this is the noise I was getting. This is a volume control cranked all the way up. This is with it low. It may not sound much, but internal noise like this can make the difference between being able to make a contact and not. Noise can get into sensitive circuits via various means. In many cases, the volume control is at the input of a high gain audio amplifier. If its leads are unshielded, as is supplied with the BitX, that's a possible source of noise ingress. Although, in this case, I didn't find it a problem. If your noise generating VFO is not in a shielded box, then that's another risk. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but it's a risk that you need to be aware of when you're troubleshooting. Another possibility is through power connections. Remember that the 12 volt supply rail is common to many parts of the circuit, whether it be a DDS VFO, receiver audio amplifier, transmitter final amplifier, and many other stages that handle varying levels of signal. There's also a possibility of noise making its way by being coupled through to sensitive parts of the receiver. For instance, RF or IF amplifiers. Coupling through the power supply rail, even if only a few millivolts of signal, can affect the performance of sensitive RF circuitry. To find the problem, you need to eliminate the causes that I've just discussed. One thing that seemed particularly easy was to put the VFO on a different power supply to the rest of the transceiver. I did that just by using an external battery. That fixed the problem immediately. By having the VFO on a separate battery meant that any noise on the VFO power supply line could not make its way into other parts of the transceiver circuitry. So the VFO and the rest of the transceiver can work off the same supply again. I built the filter, as you see in the picture, in the VFO supply line. It's very simple. This is the power supply side that goes from the power switch to all other stages in the transceiver. A 220 microfarad electrolytic capacitor is from that to ground. Then dangling from the supply line is this 12 ohm resistor. Its value isn't all that critical, but it needs to provide sufficient current for the VFO to run without problems. From the free end of the 12 ohm resistor is the power supply line to the DDS VFO. And from that point is another 220 microfarad capacitor from there to ground. A circuit diagram of the filter in the supply line of the DDS VFO. This is the positive rail, 220 microfarad capacitor, 12 ohm resistor, although that's what I had, it could easily be 10 or maybe a bit higher, another 220 microfarad capacitor, and this is the positive rail of the DDS VFO. This was sufficient to provide enough isolation between the DDS VFO and other parts of the transceiver circuitry, and allowed for clearer reception due to a quieter receiver. Just to demonstrate the effect, here I have a wire shorting out the 12 ohm resistor 
that's in the power lead of the DDS VFO. This is with the filter out, i.e. the lead across the resistor. I put the filter in, i.e. with the 12 ohm resistor in line, and the internally generated noise disappears. Let's do another comparison. With the resistor out, you can hear the noise. With it in, you can't. The only noise you should hear in a receiver is that when the antenna is connected. To summarise, digital VFOs can make your gear more stable and more enjoyable to operate. But just watch the noise. If you're not careful, they can contribute to a poorer receiving and transmitter performance. Noise can get into sensitive circuitry in various ways. On receive, disconnect the antenna and turn up the volume. If there's noticeable noise, then your VFO could be the culprit. Try and do what you can to get rid of it. Because if you don't, then your reception won't be as good and there may be contacts you may not be able to have just because of internally generated noise. This is uh, VK2 uh, Victor India November. VK2 Victor India November in Wollongong. 100k uh, from Sydney, a vineyard mainland. Here's another BitX modification I want to talk about. If you think that it's got too much gain on receive, for instance, if you're only wearing headphones, one suggestion is to reduce the receiver's gain by removing the capacitor between pins 1 and 8 of the LM386. That drops the gain from 200 down to about 20. If you want an in-between level of gain, you can just put a resistor in series with the chip capacitor. In this case, about 1 or 1.2K. That's good if you're wearing headphones, and is okay if you're only using your transceiver at home from a noisy RF environment. If you're using your BitX in a quiet RF environment, then you need maximum audio gain, and I would suggest not doing the modification at all. In fact, when I get home, I'll be taking out this resistor and going back to the original circuitry with the chip capacitor bridging pins 1 and 8. Thanks, uh, uh, bring it back to you, Peter, VK3, uh, Yankee, uh, Airport, VK2, Victor, Indiana, November. Mobile radio? Yeah. Right. So you can talk all around Australia on it. Yeah. What oh. frequency is it? Uh, 7 megahertz. Oh, yeah. So it gives you up to about a thousand kilometres. Yeah, right. And at night it sits further. But what have you got as a battery? What do you got just running off a battery? Yeah, just it? a little battery. Oh, yeah, yeah, a little lithium or something. Yeah. Yeah, I made a mine, it works a ham radio operator. Okay. Oh, you're doing a YouTube yeah, it's the same thing. Oh, yeah. I hope we can break you up there. If you want to get the most from Amateur Radio, check out my ebooks Minimum QRP hand-carried QRP antennas and getting back into amateur radio. All have been favourably reviewed and you can get them for a low price in electronic form. Visit my website vk3ye.com and follow the links or search their titles in Amazon. You can also like the VK3YE Radio Books page on Facebook. The books are available in electronic form and in some countries in paperback as well.